Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about or else versus or else gate of Java 8 optional class. Okay, so guys, if you remember in this particular video, we have already discussed most of the things about Java 8 optional class, right? In this particular video, we are going to talk about or else versus or else get function. All right, let me just uh, revise. So we have used empty of and of nullable functions to create an optional object, right? So let me give you a quick demo. Let's go and create a class Java 8 optional with main. Okay. Now let's go and talk about the very first thing, which is optional dot empty, right? So let's go and create an optional object of type string. Let's call it a string only optional dot you see here there is a function called dot empty right now if i go and print the value of this string what i'll get let me run this one so this is the default value when you use optional dot empty function to create an optional object you will get this particular value always right now let's go and quickly talk about optional dot off right so here let's go and uh, all right guys so here i quickly created a very small function what i'm doing here is this particular function will give me the captain of cricket team right so basically i'll pass a team name here right and like for example if i'm if i'm passing india this is what i'm expecting if i'm passing australia this is what i'm expecting right this particular function will give me a string value right now let's talk about optional dot off right so I'll use here optional say string type object right and we are calling it captain right cap optional dot off and now I'm going to call this function right here now it says that I need to pass a value right so let's go and pass India and then let me just sys out captain equals to captain so what I'm doing here is like we are using optional dot off to create a string value but the value is coming from this particular function right let me run this one okay so this guy is giving me Virat Kohli right so this is the value which I see here so I'll just comment out this portion let me run this one India and here is the captain for example if I pass Australia So you will see the result here steve smith correct so this is how you can go and make use of optional dot off to create an optional object of type string or, or any other type right now let's talk about one more thing here like for example if i pass null here or say for example if i pass the team name which is not here right say i if i pass england here now let's see the response what comes out so what do you see you see a null pointer exception why because when you are passing England here and if I go what I'm getting I'm getting a null as the value so capture as the null because that is my default value because it is not matching with England is not matching with any case so what I'm getting is I'm getting null right so that's why if you are using optional dot off function and if you pass null here right somehow then optional dot off will not handle the null pointer you will get a null pointer exception that is what you see here like for simplicity if i simply pass here null if i pass null here right so what i'm doing here is i'm creating a op an optional object of type string but the value is null right let's go and see the outcome what do you see a null pointer exception why because optional dot off does not handle null pointer correct so i hope you guys are clear i'll revert it okay guys now let's talk about so i'll comment this particular portion and i will use the same thing i'll copy paste but this time i'll change the function name to of nullable all right guys of nullable and let's go and pass india one more time here let's print the result here So what do you see? You see the value, right? Optional, then Virat Kohli. 
right so for example now if i pass say again let me just pass england because when i tried england here i got the null pointer exception but i'm trying same thing i'm passing england now let's see the behavior of of nullable function so what do you see it gives you a blank value optional dot empty as the result of this particular value right so of nullable handles the null pointer okay so this is the basic difference between off and off nullable. So off nullable takes care of your null pointer. If it is, if there is a null value, you will get optional dot empty. Now, for example, if I go and pass null here directly uh, like this, right? And then let me run this one. What do you see? Optional dot empty, right? Now, as one more thing. So for example, I don't want to call any function and I just want to say pass the direct value here, right? That is also I can do to create an optional object right let me run this one okay so i'm getting virat Kohli, but i'm getting this particular thing also optional and then bracket i have already explained is present and get functions if you guys remember to get the exact value so what i'm doing here is captain dot get right so if there is a value if this particular optional object has value get me the value right so i'm using is present to find out if there's a value or not if there's a value give me the value all right guys all right guys so we have uh, discussed enough about option dot empty off and off nullable i hope it's clear to guys now let's talk about today's topic so here we are talking about all else or else and or else getter now let's talk about or else first now guys let me uh, create an optional object of type string again right say say for example let's call it again data only data and I want to say call it uh, op optional dot of nullable and I want to pass it some value right some random text some value right now what my optional dot uh, or else function says that even case if there is a no value you can go and provide a default value right so for example I'll just type here or else equals to data dot this is a function called or else now i'll supply a default value here default value right guys so what i'm doing here is in case there's no value this particular function or else should give me a default value right in case there's no value i'm expecting a default value let me run this particular program let's see how it behaves so what do you see some value which is a valid value because we have passed this particular value so our optional object had some value in it right so that is what we are getting here now in case if i go and change it to null and let's see the behavior of or else right now let's go and run this particular program guys what do you see you see a default value right right guys so this is the the basic idea behind or else all right guys so here the way we created right this particular function i'm going to introduce one more function let's call it get value from api so for example here we have passed the default value, right? I don't want to pass. I want to fetch this value from a remote API. Like I want to call an API and I want to get the value from there, all right? So there is, if there is a data, right? If there is no data, what I'm expecting? I want this particular program or else to go and call this particular function. If I go here, what I've done here is, I have taken one string object. I have initialized the default value just for example sake. But in real scenario, you we are going to call this particular function this particular function will go and connect to your server it will make use of some api it will get the data then you will process the data you will get your final result you will disconnect from the uh, remote server right and then finally you will exit out of this particular function so these are the steps that is going to take place if you really working on this particular api right so just for the example sake i'm taking that i'm going to make a remote api call i'm going to invoke a web service to get my default value right so now if i let me just run this one guys so what do you see that we have called this particular function in value from api we are performing all these steps and finally we are getting our value from this particular function what we are getting we are getting india right so if i go to the result right this is what i have hard coded in the result i have put india right so that's why i can see india as the final value nothing wrong it's absolutely fine because this is what we're expecting right because our data object this particular data option object has got null value so obviously i want my or else to go and call my api and get the value from there right this looks good now let's do one thing let me just pass some value 
right? And let me run this one. Guys, what do you see? You see your or else here, your data object has got some value. That is what you see here. But still, what do you see? Your or else is still calling this particular function get value from API. Obviously, it is not returning the value from this particular function. If you go here, this particular function returns India, but you don't see India here, right? You're getting some value, right? So what is happening in background? Your, uh, your or else function, obviously, it will give you the data from your option object if it has. If there is data within your optional object, you will get the data, but it invokes whatever you supply here in or else. So let me give you the implementation. If you look at it here, this particular thing is known as other, right? So or else function calls your other, right? So whatever function is there, it will invoke. It will run all these steps, but it will not give you the value from there because your, your data, your optional object already has some value in it. If there is no value, this makes sense that I want my or else to invoke the function. But if I already have data in my option object, obviously I don't want it to go and hit the API, right? We are making an unnecessary call to a remote server to face the data. So this is the thing with the or else function and this is what you need to keep in mind. All right guys, I hope I'm making some sense here. You guys can try it out. Just So basically you have to watch this particular uh, section again and again to have a good understanding. Okay guys. Now, guys, let me talk about or else get how it behaves. I'm going to use same thing only optional string data say, let's name it or else get okay equals to optional dot of nullable. Now say guys, if I pass some value here, some value, then let's see the result of or else get how it behaves. Now let's go and call or else get now guys. In or else get, you need to pass a supplier. If I talk about or else, you can simply pass any function, right? Uh, which is returning the data that you are expecting. But or else get, or else get, it takes a supplier. Now, what is a supplier? Supplier is a functional interface. It does not take any input, it returns, it gives you something back, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm calling the same function here also in the or else get just to see the behavior of these two functions, right? So here also we are calling get value from API here also in or else get we are calling the same function. Now let me run this one just to see the result. So guys, in case of your or else, you see that your or else unnecessarily invokes the function get value from API because you already have some value. You already have some value in your data object. So there is no need to invoke this particular function. It is unnecessary, right? Now, if you go and see your uh, or else get function, we have passed a supplier. So what is happening here is you just see the value, some value, that's it. You don't see that this particular function is invoked because there's nothing, right? Now, if I go and change it to null, null, and now let's see the behavior of or else get. So guys, what do you see here? Or else get. Now because your or else get object has got null value, that's why your or else get function will call this particular function, right? And that's why you see all the logs and the values here, India, that is coming from this particular function, get value from API, all right? Now guys, the point is like, if you go and change these two to null, then the behavior remains same. Then the behavior is exactly same because your object, your optional object has got null value. So obviously you want your function to get the value from, from API or from a default function, right? So you have null value in your optional object. The behavior of or else and or else get is exactly same. No difference because here also you are calling your API function to get the value and in or else get also you are calling your function to get the value from, correct? Now the difference comes when you have some value you have some value, you have some value in both of the functions. It means that your object has got some data in it, right? You already have some value, but still you see that your or else, your or else function invokes your remote function, remote API, which is unnecessary task. But your or else get, it simply gives the value, right? I have some value and I'm getting it. So or else get does not call your function until unless it is required. It invokes your function if the value, if your option object has null value, clear? 
I hope I'm making some sense here guys. Now let me give you one more example. So basically it's all about resource utilization. So this in this example, in this function, we are making a remote server. We are making an API call, right? But there could be a scenario that you want to return the value from a database. That's a possibility, right? So I already have this database set up up and running. I already have a class where I'm hitting my database to fetch a default value, right? All right, guys. Now let's go and create one more optional. So guys, this time I'm going to make use of integer value. Integer, say for example, team points. This is my variable name. So what I'm doing is optional dot off of say pass null because I know that if I'm passing null, then only integer sys out. Right, so basically team points and the function which I'm using is or else. So what I'm doing here is I'll use my optional object team points dot or else. Now here what I want to do is I want to call my function. So here I'll pass team name say uh, IND India. All right guys, so what is happening here is that we have got our new optional object of type integer this time. And this time, if there's no value, what I'm doing is I'm calling my database. I'm calling a function here. I pass a team name, right? Now this is null. So obviously I want or else to go and get the value from the database. Let me run this program and let's see the result. If the value is null, this behavior is perfectly fine because obviously I want to hit my database and then give it the value, right? But now I say, for example, if I already have uh, 10, so team points, right? My option object has already got value 10. What I'm expecting in the result, I want 10 here, right? And I don't want this guy to go and hit the database unnecessary. Why? Because my optional object already has got some value. But if you see the behavior of or else, it gives you the value 10. This is what you have mentioned here, right? But it is also executing your function, correct? The same thing, but this time, say for example, team points, say team A points, right? And what I want, I'll just again keep it null, right? And then team A points. And this time I'm going to use or else get, right? I have just explained, right? Or else get, it takes a supplier, right guys? What is supplier? Supplier is a functional interface. It takes no argument, but it returns something, right? So here we are calling this particular uh, function, which will give me an integer value. Okay, now let's see the behavior of or else get. All right, guys. So, or else we know that it always invokes your function. But if you see here, or else get is also calling your database function. It is hitting your database to get the value and it is returning 20 as the result. Why? Because your value, your team A points, this particular option object has got null value. That's why it has to go and invoke your database. Right, guys? So, guys, this is my database. I have got here multiple teams, and if you see points of Team India, it has got 20 and that is why you see 20 here. The value is coming from the database, right? Guys, let's go and put 10 here. Now, because I know that team ends, team A's point is 10, I already have the value. So obviously I don't want to go and hit the database, right? To get the value. So what do you see in case of or else? It simply gives the value from your object. It does not go and call the function, right guys? I hope I'm making some sense. So the primary difference between or else and or else get is or else gate function, it takes a supplier as the input argument, right? It takes a supplier or else function, whether your option object has got data in it or not, it will always go and call your function. So it takes more resources. That is what you need to make sure. I've given you two examples, right? Here we have called a remote API. So again, basically here, like it is unnecessary making a call to the remote server to get the data. And here also it is unnecessarily calling the database to get the value, right? Which is not required because our object has got already some data in it. All right, guys. I hope I'm making some sense to you. In case, if you guys are not clear, just watch this video a couple of times. And all right, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.